All right, so here we go. Fun with underpaintings. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what underpaintings are, how we're gonna use them. Um, some of you have worked with me a number of times, so you're familiar with uh, what we're gonna do today. Um, we'll go into that in just a second. So for the first two weeks, so this week and next week, your normal sanded paper is all you'll need. Week three is when we're gonna start to play with truly creating our own boards and creating a really cool texture with colors and building a painting. So week three and four, um, we'll kind of interact with one another because we'll be creating and building in week three and then using those boards in week four. You can't quite make it and then use it in the same couple of hours. There's just not nearly enough drying time. So it's going to be a multitask kind of a thing. And I'll have other stuff prepared in case we go super duper fast, but hopefully we won't need to have extra things prepared. Um, so let's talk about materials real quick before we go too terribly far. So acid-free foam core. Um, the reason I say acid-free, not only for our archival purposes, but um, the acid-free is more like paper on the outer outside. Sometimes the when you go to the craft store and you go to buy poster board or foam core, it's slick. If it's slick, it's not, it doesn't do as well with the processes that we're gonna do. So um, you don't ne necessarily have to know if it's acid free, just make sure that it's like a paper feel on top, not slick um, and you'll be fine. So gesso clear or white? So I don't know about the gray, Linda, but clear, we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing lots of stuff with it. So we're gonna have different mixtures. We're gonna be adding color to the gesso. So if you have white, it's gonna look a little different than if you added the color to clear. So okay. I don't know that it's, you know, I mean, well, yeah, it'd probably important. make it more opaque if it's white, if you mix color with white. Um, but I, I don't think it's gonna be that huge of a difference. So you can- If I have to buy it, I might as well get to clear that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think what I have is clear. Um, the, what brand is it? Golden has, and we're not gonna be using it, but this is just kind of an FYI. And I'll remind you again in week three, but Golden has um, jars of pre-made different colored prep, um, pastel prep that you can put on anything. You can put it on wood, you can put it on whatever you want um, to create a sanded surface. I have some, I've used some. It's a little rough for my taste, but it works, it's fun. Uh, but that's just kind of an FYI. A paintbrush or foam roller. So we're gonna be playing with textures. So just have a variety of sizes of paintbrushes. Um, Foam roller is only if you want a smooth surface. So it's just up to you if you want that or not. Um, the marble dust. So we just kind of talked about marble dust. Um, like I said, if anyone's near me, which, okay, not very many of you are near me, but um, it is really cheap and it lasts forever. So um, do you have Hobby Lobby or do you have to get it online? You can just use some of my, I mean, literally I've had my bag of marble dust for 10 years. I mean, it's oh. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. It's like for what I use it for, I mean, I, you know, once every few years I use a teaspoon of it and it's still there. So, um, but yeah, the hot, the craft stores do have it. Um, and if there is an option, the finer, the better. Um, so today, rubbing alcohol and a paintbrush of whatever sort is necessary. So underpaintings in general. So underpaintings, underpaintings can be a roadmap. It can be your drawing. It can be 
Um, you can cover it completely over and not use it, or it can stand out as part of your planned painting. So we're gonna be testing the waters on a little bit of both. Um, in terms of actual techniques of what to do with underpaintings, there's, in pasteling, you know, there's a few standards of how to, of the technical side of things. You can use watercolor um, and, and pretty much render a whole scene in watercolor and just touch your pastel over it and then you have a mixed media painting. Um, you can, we're gonna do, you can do a monochromatic scheme. It's also a time that I like to play with color, play with color theory. Um, in which that's what we're gonna do next week is we're gonna do a little color theory play and we're gonna um, do some different things underneath. And then when we paint on top, we're gonna see what kind of effects we can get. So with underpaintings, for anybody who's a big blender, for anybody who puts the pastel and touches it, down and touch, down and touch. This is gonna be a little challenging for you. I'm gonna challenge you to not down and blend, down and blend, because you lose the effect of the underpainting. You don't get the glow that the extra color can give you. If you just keep pushing it into the paper, you're just gonna kind of dull everything down and lose that, that cool vibrancy that you had. Um, in these four weeks, most of you who have worked with me, we've done dry underpaintings, which is just our first layer and set in with our pipe insulation. We're not gonna do that. It's all gonna be some kind of a wet underpainting. Um, so we should not need our pipe insulation for blending. Um, underpaintings can do a lot of the legwork for you. This. When I do the larger the painting, I'll do an underpainting so you feel like you accomplished something. <laughs> but it spreads it spreads the pigment for you. And if planned properly, there's not a lot of heavy lifting in the end. You know, you don't have to fuss with it too much. You can get your whole composition and a whole value scale and you're just popping in the highlights on top. Um, I say that like it's so simple, but in theory, it is. <laughs> in theory. Um, oh, so for next week, if you have one handy, uh, get your color wheels out, um, for next week, we don't need it today, but for next week, have it handy or just have something, um, online. So you can just refer to a few things. Um, I went through all that. Oh, with the paintbrush and the foam roller, if you have a palette knife, Palette knife will be uh, come in handy too. Um, not this week. Again, that'll be for week three. Another thing for week three, I talked about we're going to add color. Um, adding color to the gesso can be done in multiple ways. You can have ground up pastel dust. Again, the softer the pastel, the better. I know it's, a, it's terrible to sacrifice the soft one, but the harder ones have too much binder in them for the gesso mixture. For the rubbing alcohol, it's great. But for the gesso mixture, you need the, the more pure pigment. Um, you can also use acrylic paint, but just be careful with acrylic paint because it can also turn your mixture a little um, plasticky. So when it dries, the surface can be a little too smooth, um, even with the marble dust in it. Um, I have, and I'm gonna be experimenting, I had some tubes of watercolor paint that came in one of those kits for my daughter, which she never used. So I grabbed those. So I'm going to try and use the watercolor tubes. Um, I'm going to try that before we go to class just to see yeah. how that works. Um, Renee, will we be ne needing um, plastic cups also when we're mixing? Should we yeah, have so I would honestly use it like a plate, like a paper plate or okay. you know, something like that because. Um, okay just in case you wanna have a, a wider brush or the roller and you wanna be, just to have a, a flatter surface, you know, so we'll have like paper plates ready. Um, 
Oh, and a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper. This is again for week three. Um, because when we put down, when we make our mixture and we put it down, sometimes it's too rough. And if it's too rough and you don't like it, you can just knock off some of the, the really big bits and, and you'll have a smoother surface. Um, for week four? Yes, Probably. so week four, yeah. you wouldn't need it until week four once everything's dry. Do you think, do you ever get it where it works as good as this paper? No, it's a whole different feel. So when we plan out our painting, we'll be, we'll really be planning. And you know me, I am just like, go! And we just start painting. But this, we're actually going to, um, we're going to take whatever landscape we're working on and we're going to plan out the elements and we're going to plan out the colors and we're going to do it in layers. So, you know, we can use the texture to our advantage. If there's grasses, you can make kind of a grassy texture. We'll have color underneath and they make a grassy texture and then you can just run your pastel on top and just, we're really going to play with it. It's not really going to look like our normal paintings. Yeah. So it'll be kind of fun. Um, I have actually, I don't know. Let me see if I can pull it up because I have one that I did. Um, we did it as part of the whole series at um, up at Ocean County Artist Guild. Um, hopefully it was, or wait, maybe it was 2022. What went your class so much? Yeah. No, wait, it was 2021. It 2021. So Windows Update finally gave me a little bit of those the preview of the pictures again. Because for a while on your folders, forever, you could see what was in the folder by the picture. And then, all right, so that's it. Let me share screen. And then they took that ability away. And now they gave it back, but they only gave us like a peekaboo, which is annoying. All right, so let me share screen and you guys will be able to really see the texture. All right, so on this one, so you can see so the board itself, I made kind of um, most of it kind of flat. And then I took a heavier mixture to make the rocks. So the rocks have a bigger mm -hmm. texture to them. You can come up if I you want. See it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so all I had to do was just touch the green moss on top of it. And it's got, you can, you can literally feel the tech, it feels like a rock and it looks like a rock. Um, and then I had brush marks going sideways for the back mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. So this was, it was a little, it was kind of frustrating, I got to be honest, because it was so different, you know. Um, but once you kind of let go of what you would normally do, then it became really freeing. And actually, it worked really fast. I mean, I think I ended up painting the whole scene in 20 minutes because. Wow. Yeah, like it, it, it A, it only lets you do so much, right? But B, it's already planned. So. A couple of the places you can see here with these markings here, I took some rubbing alcohol just to kind of set some of it in place um, with a little less texture so I could kind of just push it back in. So, so many things that we're going to be able to do with it so much that, you know, you can really truly get creative with this. And Linda, I see you having a ton of fun with this gotta be honest yeah i, I know I'm, i was looking at those rocks thinking salivating i thought oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um okay so so next week besides needing the color wheel it is going to be a little bit of a challenge we're going to have fun pushing our own boundaries the image i'm going to send you for next week is going to be black and white Oh, so then we're going to make a fun color palette oh, to go good. with it. Okay. <laughs> um, 
So that's the kind of point. I don't want you to know what the colors truly were. You'll probably, you can probably guess at a lot of it, but this is, this helps you when you get the image in black and white, it kind of frees up your thinking. It frees up, you know, well, I see it's green. It should be green. Well, now it can be blue or purple or pink or whatever else you want it to be. So, um, so that'll be fun. Um, does anybody have any questions about, I know I just spewed a lot out at you <laughs> with what we need and anything else. Um, if you have any questions after this, so just shoot me an email or anything like that and we'll, I'll get it answered for you. Um, all right. So I'm going to switch cameras and we're going to jump right in. I just need to turn my camera on. Hopefully it's still focused. Um, stop it. Stop it. Okay. So you'll be able to see both. <clears throat> my image and my board. Um, I'm going to start with, I was going to do this one as the monochromatic scheme, but I have painted this scene before. And then I remembered, I really liked the orange under the sky. So we're going to, I'm going to do, and again, choose your own colors or follow along with me exactly. It's fine. Um, I'm gonna do like a um a new well, it's all it's got so much pastel dust on it. So this is like a, a maybe not as dark as I thought it was. I was gonna grab an ultramarine blue. Yeah, so this one's a little darker. So it probably looks a little black. So this is the um hard stick, it's a new pastel, it's like close to their equivalent to their ultramarine blue. I had one that's a little bit lighter but it's a bigger stick. So I think I'll go with the bigger stick that's a little bit lighter <laughs> because it's a bigger stick. Yeah. Um, got my light. Probably my table is a little. All right, I have to run and get my wet wipes. Hold on just one second. Yeah. That's okay. Sometimes it's better, they're better smaller. Yeah. I just mixed them around with mine. Okay. And I forgot to put, I'm going to put on my gloves in a bottle. Um, because I literally hate gloves. So that's the barrier cream that I use. Okay. Let that dry for a second. Oh, I need my pencil. So um things to consider with this particular photograph um this photo is of the egg harbor township nature preserve mm -hmm. or preserve or whatever um down on the bottom and there was snow on the ground so the water that you see over here that's kind of frozen over and this is a little bit of frozen water. So you can see it gets a little blurry and then clear and then blurry again. So uh, it's a little bit of snow, a little bit of water. You can see a little bit of snow right up under here. Um, things to consider when you are putting in your drawing. This is mud and leaves down at the bottom. You may or may not put that in there. So you can always you know, fold up your paper and have less, have the water however you want that to be. Um, I just kind of love the angles that were happening all at once in this little composition here. Um, it kind of juts out like a couple little islands a little bit and then water tucks back in and then juts back out. So that's what you're looking at there. Um, time of day was probably between nine and 10 in the morning. So the sun's not quite all the way up. And since there was snow, this was probably 
January of last year, I think is when I took this. So we're, we are talking winter. Um, just kind of nice. So the, the sky was a little bit overcast. I'm not going to make it like that. Um, it's kind of plain and boring. So I'm not, I'm going to add some punch and pop to that. Um, so for the drawing aspect, just kind of, well, the trees, you can little freeform a little bit. Um, this little shoreline, I know it's really dark over there. You can make that what you want. I mean, you can just make it trees top to bottom. Um, but there's a little hill that kind of goes up here. You can kind of see a little bit of that snow. Um, so it's a little bit of land and then the trees are behind it. And that's like a little island right here. Um, that's not going to be in my painting. That's just going to be part of the water and the shoreline. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. So simple lines, just so I can get started. Well, my paper is an odd size, by the way. It is, um, I don't know, I think 10 by 13 just happened to be. So it's a little bit larger. So think about that proportion wise, this photograph is long and skinny. You know, what? how you're gonna get what you're gonna get in there. So if you're going nine by 12, something's probably gonna give or your tree's gonna get a little shorter, whatever you need to make. Um, all of those little fallen branches that are in the front, I'm not drawing those. If they find their way to have a life in my painting, that's fine. But for right now, I am not drawing them. <clears throat> I'm just drawing with a regular HB pencil. You can draw with whatever you choose. I'm not going to draw in all the tree trunks. I'm just going to kind of get a hint of the biggest ones. And we'll worry about painting them in later. There's a lot of dark over here. So when I go to mark in. Oh, perfect. Those trees, then Good. it'll be. The tree line is behind. So fairly simple line drawing. Take your time. Get in there again, just the most important things, nothing crazy. And your darkest, you can use a purple. Um, you don't have to use the ultramarine blue. You can use whatever you want. I mean, it could be red for that matter, but I'm gonna stick with the blue for right now because I think it matches how I want the scene to go. These are super, super soft and super, super creamy. So these are things to just kind of keep in mind when you're painting. So you've got the hardest of the hard and the softest of the soft. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be, this is a great set, right? but this will be one of those, you got to press hard. So, <laughs> okay, whisper and a boulder. It is kind of, you know, in between there. Okay. <laughs> she has like the suddenly A's that. Oh, I didn't even. I just picked what you had on the on the list. Yeah, no, suddenly mm -hmm. A's are great. Actually, they're too soft for me. I don't use them. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. they're great. They're great. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're very yeah. creamy. They're, you know what I mean. They're sure. They're wonderfully they're creamy. 
Some of them every now and again will crumble. If they crumble, you can put it back together with um, water. Well, you can smash it down. Or use it for your gesso. Or use it for your gesso. Okay, beautiful. They're just yeah. looking. Yeah. It's like I've had this set for years. And years. What is this one? This is um, new pastels. Yeah. Okay, so wouldn't it be okay if she just kind of used it? Oh, yeah, too. But right. if you only had that. If you only had that, then yeah. it, uh, problems, just adjustments. I'm just solid. Adjustments. It's never a problem. Never, uh, never wrong. Just to get a, that's what I just like to, you know, I, I have about five or six different brands in my box. Um, one brand is even softer than those that I have. And um, you just, you'll get to know, even without them being in their manufacturer box, you'll get to know what brand they are just by touching them and how they act with each other. So I talk about how certain brands play together. Certain brands don't play well together. Yeah. They, certain brands like to be the only one down and nothing on top. And certain brands like to, you know, they mix really nicely. So all kinds of. I have another box. Uh, <laughs> for someone who doesn't do pastels. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to do. Oh, nice. I'm going to start to just use my ultramarine blue and fill in my, I'm starting with the concept of monochromatic. So I'm going to kind of set things in place. I'm not worried about the snow and stuff right now. Um, you, are you going to do the orange or no? Yeah, I'm going to do the orange too. Uh -huh. But that's going to be in the side. For this part, it doesn't really matter. If you started with the, the I'm going to put orange in the sky. It doesn't really matter um, which one for that. For when we get to the rubbing alcohol, it'll matter. Sure. For this, it doesn't really matter. So there is like a little bit of, it almost looks like motion. And then it's a lake, but it almost looks like motion based on how things are frozen over. Um, all these little branches down here, I'm not worried about yet. Some of them may be incorporated into the painting and some of them might not be. And so now I have a nice bright orange. I'm gonna fill the sky with, notice I didn't put all kinds of teeny tiny branches just yet. And I am avoiding that specifically because if I do that too soon, I'm not gonna be able to get my sky in place. And then I'm gonna be fighting, painting around teeny tiny branches. And I don't wanna fight and go around teeny tiny branches. I wanna put teeny tiny branches on top. And you know what? I'll put a little bit of orange in the water because I feel like it. <laughs> I'll get a little bit in there. So that's kind of a fun little graphic design look right there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take my rubbing alcohol, I'm gonna go ahead and set this in place. And that way while mine is drying, um, then you guys can do yours. So if you're watching, you can just sit and watch for a second or, um, cause we all have to let our alcohol, we have to let everything dry completely before we move on to paint. So um, it doesn't matter what percentage you get. I have a 91, but it'll just dry a, like maybe a minute or so faster than say like a 70%. Um, what kind is it? It's just rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just Walmart, right? <laughs> um, the brush that you use, the most important thing to think of is that you don't care about it too much because sure. the um, sanded paper over time will certainly ruin your brush. Um, I have, I don't know, it's a filbert. It's a big filbert, so it's a little softer. Sometimes I like a, a rough paintbrush and sometimes I like a smooth paintbrush. It does do a little bit different. Um, it handles differently. So, Play with both. I, I think the soft paintbrush 
lays into the paper a little bit nicer than the hard one that kind of scrubs in. Um, for those of you who haven't done the rubbing alcohol before, drips are fine, don't freak out. Um, if the drips happen and you don't like them, you can just let them dry and paint over them or you can stop them with a paper towel. Um, you can also just hold your paintbrush up and the rubbing alcohol will run down the ferrule of the paintbrush instead of onto your paper. If you're not afraid of the drips, you can just aim your brush down and it'll fall down the paper. Always start with the lighter color that you have because your rubbing alcohol will get muddy really fast. See, I've touched a little bit of that blue. I'm okay with that though. Um, this process, you don't need to fuss. You don't need to have anything laid out perfectly. It's just blocking in some color. Nothing has to be gloriously rendered like an oil painting grisaille. You don't need to have, we're not gonna be pulling any out for lights and darks. We're just gonna use what we have to create the light and the dark. I didn't think to bring a little cup with, with me. All I have is a spray. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna hold on to that. So I kind of like little drips because sometimes it creates something fun. So, you know, again, you can paint over them. They're not going to ruin anything. Um, or you can let them be exposed. That's the fun part about this, the whole underpainting process. If you didn't like what you created in an underpainting, you can just paint right over it. It'll cover up if you need it to, especially if you're on a sanded paper that holds multiple layers. Um, if you really, really, really don't like it, some of you, many of you have heard me say, oh, you can just take your paper out back and hose it off. You can, you can absolutely hose off you are and reuse it. If you have an alcohol wash underpainting, after you hose it off, you'll still see the underpainting. If you really, really, really hate the underpainting, um, once it's dry, once the paper is dry, you can erase it off. Unless, you can erase, yeah unless you've used ink. There's, um, so I've seen artists use um, ink for their underpainting, which is really cool and really bold and really- um, What kind of ink? Like, like, like just steep oh, like, ink like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Um, I used it once before, but that doesn't come off. And there's, <laughs> and it is, <laughs> It is very specific. It is very, um, and it's harder to cover because it's so saturated. Um, I might not be, some of you have heard me say before that, you know, I like pastels because it's, nothing is permanent. You don't have to have a commitment, you know, to the anything. And really with that ink, you've got quite the um, commitment there. <laughs> So I am using the brush to kind of shape things out a little bit for the, the, the dark parts here. So uh, I'm doing the darkest, the heavier sections first because then the um, rubbing alcohol gets stained. Quite the muddy mixture right now because I have the orange in there and it moves around differently. So the less pigment you put down, the lighter the rubbing alcohol will look and you can get that really nice feel of, like I said before, a grisaille where your painting is all set out in a drawing stage. I do use directional markings even at this stage, just to help me out with the roadmap. You can see over here, it's much lighter and blue than the dark of the trees. Mm 
Okay. All right, so I'm gonna pause the recording for a minute so we can watch our paint dry. <laughs> second there. Okay, so when you touch, as long as nothing comes off on your fingers, you know everything's dry. The rubbing alcohol will make it so it's cool to touch some, you know, for a few minutes. So if it's cool, but nothing comes out on your fingers and you're okay. Um, it's, yes, just let it, you have to make sure it dries. Otherwise it gets, it'll just be really gummy. Um, really gummy. Actually, Molly, I think this is the one I painted for your demo for the parklet. It is. Park it's the same one. It is. That's why I, I have to say that's what brought me here because you pulled it off and they have had a lot of demos, a number. I'm, I'm new to the group. Yeah. Some of them are quite lame. It's one or, people, ah. one or two people walked out and it's okay. Yours was spot on. You, you pulled it off and you were engaging and it was very nice. So this is like a redundant or a repetition for me. So I'm oh, just good. enjoying watching, you know, I'm kind of yeah. doing a little scene from my house, my where I grew up, a little scene with a house in it. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. But yeah. Yeah. I I'm, did I'm, have I kept drawing. Yeah, sometimes I try not to, you know, sometimes you have demos online, you see all of a sudden that the numbers dropped and you get a little paranoid, like, oh, was I not entertaining enough? But, you know, <laughs> I think I did no, have one lady say yeah. she didn't realize her mic was hot and she, this is a different group. Yeah. And somebody walked through her room and she goes, I can't believe they let her do a demo. What? I was like, oh yeah. Oh my God, what a rude person. No, you're wonderful. You're just they wonderful. Start, like, yelling at it. They're like, wow. hey, oh, you're I mean, I, I, there was a guy that they had at that same place you were at and he did um, abstractions. He's a science teacher, young man. And um, uh, all he talked about is how he pirates materials for his framing. And he wasn't prepared. Oh, and in fact, I led him to a place down the street from me in Emmaus where they have piles of strip wood and uh, thinking, you know, he was going to, uh, uh, he, good at framing i thought i'd get a discount <laughs> yeah he charged me all kinds of money but i want to say that he wasn't prepared in that he didn't have his um paints he couldn't even oh. find his paints and oh lord so he was young but you know oh gosh he, now you're you're wonderful you this why i'm here <laughs> all right so now we have to think about how to actually start painting this scene right so sometimes it's really tempting to just start painting the big trees that are in the foreground, but you have to wait because otherwise you'll cause yourself some heartache. So we have to think about painting back to front. Um, if a painting is a landscape and it has a sky in it, you're most likely going to be painting the sky first in 99.9% .9 of the situation because everything sits on top of it. If I try to paint all these trees. Now I got to try to fit the sky around tree branches. So the few, the five that I have here are way plenty <laughs> to try and paint around. It's already going to be a little bit aggravating to paint around that. Um, so that's what I think about. What comes first? What sits behind? So we're going to have, if I'm looking at the whole scene, we've got the sky is the furthest away. Then we've got a tree line in front of it. And then we've got the water tucks behind the trees and comes up and wraps around. So I have to do the sky first, I have to do this background tree next. I'll start to put the water in. The water is not as detrimental as like the sky would be because there's so many little tiny branches up there. Um, but just to get a little hint of it is definitely going to be necessary. And then we'll move on from there. So I'm going to, because I have the bright orange showing, I'm going to try to incorporate that as best I can. Um, when you have that orange under there, it creates a little bit of a glow. So I've got a little light turquoise. I'll probably add a little bit of blue. 
but you can start to see the colors kind of vibrate with one another. So again, this is part of how you sneak in a little bit of color theory into your underpainting. Um, because once you start to play with what colors have what effect against one another, then you can really create some fun, vibrant effects. Now I'm still using the whole side of the stick as long as I can. Um, and that's your soft pastel. This is soft pastel. So you can go with whatever you want at this point. Um, I have gotten to a point where it's more about the color than the softness anymore. Technically, technically, it goes hard to soft, meaning the soft pastels are always going to layer more nicely on top of hard pastel but it doesn't mean you can't use hard pastel once you get going in a painting um, you just have to push a little harder um, you might not get that soft effect that you were going for um, but it'll help you blend it'll help you um, move things around a little bit it'll get you something mm -hmm. I'll probably use this color again in the water a little bit too. You know, just put a little bit down there for right now. I do kind of like how this turquoise just by itself with the with the orange is looking. I think that's pretty. I'm not sure if I'm going to add a blue to it or not. Like a regular, let me see how that feels. The find a little corners. Maybe a little of both. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a, a purple blue. Yeah, it's a little yeah. bit of a periwinkle, kind of a blue, lavender-y feel. Um, but it's a nice combo. Again, I'm not going to blend. I just want these to kind of sit together and play together. So what I mean by that is in pasteling, you can have, you can blend two colors together on your board to get a new color. Or you can let them sit with one another and they make a new color. So it just depends on what your effect you're going for. Normally, I make my sky very smooth. But since I have this underpainting, I'm gonna let the texture go. I want to, I want to keep it for a little bit. Maybe even get a little crazy and add a little pink in there. Yes, I don't want to go too far just yet with the pink. I do like the pink. It's a very, very pale pink that I grabbed. Hardly a pink at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can kind of start to indicate some of that light shining through. I'm really getting ahead of myself on that, but I don't, when I use an underpainting, I very rarely blend um, because blending will just kind of push the particles into the paper and you lose the effect of the underpainting. So, I try to avoid it if I can. Step back often. Good, that's pretty. Bless you. Great work. Good. Good. I 
if you want to ever, if you have questions and you want to show me your progress, you can either email it to me or you can add it to the chat and I can pick it up there. So just let me know if you do that so I can go look for it. <laughs> so these background trees that I'm about to start tackling, um, the photograph, again, because of the time of the day, the light in the sky, the reflections off of the frosty water, really, really darkened up that tree line. Um, yes, it was somewhat dark, but not, not like that. So I'm not going to go as heavy into the dark. Um, it will be, you know, fairly dark, but I, I want to kind of lighten it up a little bit. Um, it doesn't need to have that super pale gray blue color, like a really distant tree line. It doesn't need to go that light, um, but we can add a little bit of light in there. And there are a lot, you can tell by the, um, the tree line at the top, you can tell there's a lot of pine. There's a lot of scraggly pine up in there. Um, so you can add those greens. You can add like those nice pale gray greens. You don't have to go too terribly bright and summery. Um, so that's what I'm gonna start to look for. I think I'm even gonna go into the really dark teal family because again, it gives a little bit of a gray property. And very loose markings with it. Still staying on the edge. Now, you probably can't see much of what I'm doing because it's so dark. I wonder. I'll leave that on. Sometimes the overhead light above my easel is a help, and sometimes it doesn't do much of anything. So I like to test that participation actually helps. Well, this is one of those really hard sticks that is supposed to be soft. So I, you can hear it. You can hear how hard it is, but it's literally a Terry Ludwig that it's the night set that I bought years ago. That it's, I think it was. It's hard. Yeah, I think they just had like a little goof up when um, like a new person maybe was on board and the, like most of the set was like really, really hard. Mm -hmm. It feels like a giant new pesto. Did you let them know? No, I didn't. And I, you know, it's been so long now. I should have let them know in the beginning and I never did. So that's on me. So in paintings like these, I try to stay away from brown. I don't, I'm not a big fan of brown. Um, so I'm going to kind of pull in like a magenta-y kind of a purple, purple-y color. Um, I'll have to zoom in for you guys okay. soon because this is a lot brighter. It has a little bit of a magenta tone that I just added there for that seemingly where I pointed out there's a little bit of snow on the ground. So I just kind of want to, the trail there, it's like a two-tiered trail. So you can see um, the trail kind of is up on top of this little hill. <clears throat> and then it tucks back into the trees over here. So there's all kinds of things happening in there. I'm a big fan of the color that I just put down there. All right, so I'm going to get figure that out. Let's 
I'm going to pull into some greens here. Of course, that looks like a little bit of a brown green. I'm really, I'm not necessarily painting specific trees um, because it's such a thick line of trees where it's just, they all kind of make one big form and the form itself has light and shadow in it. So I'm just kind of focusing on a little bit of light and shadow. And probably pushing light a little bit more because I said before, I, I don't want it to be so terribly dark in all the spaces. I'm gonna pull in some more blue. There is like a little hazy kind of a blue in there. Although this blue looks a little purple. Light. That's a little too light. Yeah, that value is a little too light. I'll have to fix that. Go back. <laughs> Good. So uh, with this brand, so, so the layering is different. So that one's, yeah. So within the, the box, you'll get some that are softer than others. Sometimes it has to do with the pigment itself. A lot of times greens are really, really soft and they go really, really far. Um, and I keep talking about painting on the full side of the stick. So when you first have a new stick and they're hand rolled, you have wonky edges. So it's best to just kind of take a piece of paper and just kind of get the edge a little bit so you don't have like that lines. Yeah, um, but you're good. So also keep in mind, um, you can keep a dry paintbrush handy and you can lighten things up. So if you got a little heavy and you can't add any more pastel, you can take a little off with a dry paintbrush and add back to it. But this looks great so far. You're going, going great. How do you feel? It's different. I mean, I've never used anything this yeah. soft. So it's interesting. Didn't you did you start with oil painting before you did? <laughs> yeah. So you know to I started with dark oil painting light first. instead of light to dark like yeah. you do now. So and then it went to acrylics and then yeah. and watercolor. Yeah. So you know how to think backwards. So. Well, sort more of. or less. <laughs> yeah. Looks good, right? Thanks. Okay. All right. I need to regroup my brain for a second. So I feel like a couple of things. I'm going to just kind of move that blue in because it was a little too light. I need the green in the trees. I did put some green in the trees, yeah. No, I can actually go over the, the sky again <laughs> or not. How do you, uh, yeah, yes, you can, but how do you want to, well, are you to adding? Are you trying to add more color? Or are you? Well, level out a little bit. Or should I just take a, another brush? Oh, down? yeah, because of those marks. I would just, because we're trying to keep the integrity of the orange, start with like the side of your pinky and just give it a light swoosh and see if it goes away. If it doesn't, then get out the oh, paintbrush. Yeah. yeah, so you can just gently move it without crushing it into the paper. Oh, that's nice. So now I just pulled up this nice gray purple. And that gives it that foggy kind of a feel, that little like distance. Right? It's like a, yeah, like a, got it. 
gives a little bit of distance there. Um, and then I can put in some shadows, deeper shadows at the bottom. And if you don't like an edge, so let's say you have a specific stop and start mark, don't necessarily go straight to blend it. Just tap it with your finger. And just that gentle tapping can set that little bit in place and it's fine. Um, Would you use there like an eggplant or a pizzadori? Oh, it is. I think it. It's the one that's not quite egg for it. Right? Uh -huh. It's just as deep. Mm -hmm. Got that little hint of red in it. Mm -hmm. I want to get a little bit of that snow. I got a little crazy before and added the wrong kind of a color. There we go. So we got some nice shadow snow. I can hint. But it's somewhere else too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the background line of trees isn't the star of the show, so I'm not going to fuss with them too terribly much. Um, something that I didn't really talk about just yet was where the sky meets the tree line. Um, this tree line is really tight. There's not a lot of variety. Um, it is just basically a line for the most part going across, but you'd still want it to have a little bit of um, personality of some sort, right? It doesn't need to be completely straight. Um, if you want it to be a little tight, you know, some of those scraggly pines, you can just kind of gently push up mm -hmm. from the tree line into the sky. When you do that though, just make sure you clean off your stick in between because you're going to start to pull in, you'll pull in sky on your stick and then it'll get muddy and we don't necessarily want that. Um, for the, the trees that have no leaves anymore, deciduous trees that have empty, you can set your stick down in the tree line and just gently pull up and that will give you a very loose top that looks like all kinds of teeny tiny little branches. So I like to say it's like the inside of a C, like you're almost tracing. And you're using um, for that, I use the, the grayish purple because it's kind of a gray feel. So if this is your C, oops, you're just kind of setting your stick down and just pulling it up, pulling it up. You're just running it along the inside of the C. C, like the letter C? Like the letter C. But I always like, I like the looser top over the tighter top. Mm -hmm. It's just a personal preference, but only because I feel like when I when I try to get too specific, I feel like it, it changes the feel and I don't want it to be a tight painting. All right, so I'm gonna step back and take a look before I move on to my trees. How's everybody doing online? It looks a little scary right now. That's okay. Scary okay. is fine. Scary is, we always have uh, the ugly face. <laughs> and it can last up into the very end. It doesn't, you know, sometimes it lasts a really long time and it's very frustrating, but it's okay. Did 
you have enough light back here? I, I have other spotlights if you want a spotlight. I'm okay. I'll probably maybe next time I'll put this table closer to the window and that way we can have that outlet and use another link. We using we using any gray down here for the water? Not yet. I haven't really. I I put the light colors in the water, but other than that, I haven't touched the water. Oh. Other than those two, the turquoise and that pinkish color. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I know. Heavy side. Heavy side. I'm right Are here you? with her. <laughs> Is everybody sure they're okay? <laughs> <laughs> not sure yet okay it's fun though <laughs> good fun's good no we're trying <laughs> yeah so now that i've got I'm still pretty happy with my sky. I don't really necessarily want to touch the sky. Um, I'm pretty good with my background, uh, the background trees. Good enough that I have enough information that if I have to just slightly alter some of it, it's not going to be a big deal. So I'm, I'm good with that. Um, I have a little hint of water behind here going in those strips. So I'm good with that. I think I can go ahead and start working on these trees. Now there's a ton of trees. Um, but you don't have to paint every single branch. Please don't paint every single branch. <laughs> uh, just for your own mental capacity. It's just, it's a bit much, right? Mm -hmm. um, so these trees in the foreground, they're all pretty dark. I'm going to keep them pretty dark. It, I mean, not black. I will be using probably some eggplant, a little bit of eggplant. Um, I'll probably pretend that there's some snow on some of the trees um, just because. And then, um, and then some other grays and stuff like that. Um, So I'm taking a look at some of the, in the photograph, I want to look at the most interesting trees first, you know, the ones that are creating the, the really cool angles. Um, but at the same time, I want it to be natural. I don't want it to be like soldiers in a row. I don't want it to be only every single branch, you know, swaying that way. I do want a couple of cross branches that are going in an opposite direction. Um, you know, a couple of the ones like these that swoop over everything. Because it's such a dark cluster, um, it's really hard to tell which one's in front of which. So I'm just gonna go with it the best I can, not really worrying about which ones come in front of the other. <laughs> Hello, guys. <laughs> Good. It looks wonderful. Good. Wonderful. All right. So for the yeah. for the fatter tree trunks, I'm gonna do more of a side to side motion because I want them to be more round. If I just kind of go right up and draw a line, it's just gonna look like I drew a line. I don't really want a line. And even when it gets a little tight, it's still good. I'm still giving it a little shimmy. So I'm worried about these tree trunks first. And we'll get into the next, you know, the smaller tree branches in just a second. Um, Uh, whoopsies. Wait, I lost my little I okay. Eh, all right, I just changed the landscape there. I had the tuck in and then I 
there's that little tucket of water that comes around and I kind of lost it. It's supposed to be over here. I'll figure that out. Okay, I can still fix that. Um, when I'm adding these big fat tree branches or the trunks that I already have marked in place, it's easy, right? Because I'm just kind of taking that deep dark color and giving it a little shimmy all the way up into the end. Now, when you get to the point that you're adding more tree trunks, because you, you know, these were, I did five, I'll be putting more in. Um, you might need to carve a pathway because taking your deep dark color and putting it over the sky could create like a little smear instead of a solid tree trunk. Instead of trying to just push harder and go over it, um, take your dry paintbrush, a stiff bristled dry paintbrush, and just carve where you want that tree to go. So actually I have a soft brush here. It should work fine. So if I'm gonna add, Let's say I'm going to add one right through here. I'm just going to carve a pathway. And that will loosen up the, it'll open up the tooth just enough so you can get your, your stick in there and it'll stick nicely. Um, I'm going to do a couple more while I have my brush handy. I'm moving around some of the pastel with my brush because it I had light pastel dust on the brush so I can put back that water. Um, I don't need to carve pathways for the little skinny branches. I'm only worried about the trunks and the big fat branches. Um, reason being when we roll our sticks to create the little branches, which I'll show in a minute, you just kind of, it'll just sit nicely on top. You don't have to worry about that. Nice, sweetheart. So you can kind of see there on line there, the, the pathways. I also have like a really deep navy blue that's um, good for some of these tree trunks too. You don't have to stick. Okay, that's not navy. Why was it in the? Okay, <laughs> it's more of a, more of a green brown. I kind of like it. So it is pretty bold. I think I like it though. I'm going to use it for a little bit because it's a similar value. Um, when I get up to the thinner parts, and it doesn't matter what brand you have, you can use rectangular round, you know, whatever you have, but you can roll it. And so it's basically as you hold it between, you have it pinched between your fingers, then you take your fingers and you roll it as you go. But it's a roll and drag because our fingers only go so far and that's pretty short, right? We don't necessarily want to stop. So as you're rolling, it's a, a nice, it's a drag and a roll, and you can go backwards and forwards on it. And what that does is it creates those nice little natural knobs 
um, the little angles and all kinds of crooks and things like that, all those little juts and turns. And you can use, like I said, any, any of the brands will do it. Um, sometimes though a round one is easier and it gives you a cleaner line. Sometimes you want a smaller line or a thicker line. It doesn't, you know, just play with the sticks that you have. Um, like this one, I can tell it's only going to be good for the fatter ones. Um, I'll have to pick a different one. This one's been used quite a bit, it looks like, for that purpose, because both ends are kind of rounded over instead of squared off. So I'll keep it for the fatter parts. So the trees always look very um, elementary in the beginning, because as you're building all these trees, it just looks like, you know, a little kid with your crayons and you're just placing branches in places. So just have patience with yourself. Um, I still don't want you to do all of them, but you'll start to see as you build in, you know, some of the fatter trees to the thinner trees to the branches, um, when to stop, you know. Like we have about an hour left. So I'll keep an eye on the clock to make sure that we talk, we get to the water in the foreground. Um, I'll also get really bored of painting trees anyway. So, but I'm <laughs> going to be <laughs> working on the trees for just a little while longer before I move into I think I'm going to switch sticks though, since this one is a little, it's a great color, but it's um, kind of weird on the end. I'm just using black. Yeah, you can use black too. Because I don't really have anything that isn't. And then just, you can put one. like, you can put like blues and purples with the black just to unflatten it, you know? Uh, maybe, maybe this. Yeah, one. like that one. It's going to be a little on the gray side, but you can use it to help with the given, given some more personality. I do find that my fingers get really, really dirty when I start to roll with the dark colors. <laughs> it just kind of really pushes the pigment into your fingers. Right, and keep going with some colors here. I can go like, so when you get to the smaller branches, you can go with lighter colors, you know? Um, even though they look really dark, the smaller they get, the more obscured they get. They, they turn, they look a little gray because they're clustered together. So you can start to lighten things up just a little bit um, with grays and such. <clears throat> would advise to resist the urge to take your pencil to draw <laughs> even a pastel pencil, pencil? <laughs> either the pastel pencil or a regular pencil so just you know i know there's tons of teeny tiny branches but you know <laughs> it's just we don't need to paint them all we don't need to be there
and stand back too often to make sure you're not making weird patterns. You know, we do that. <laughs> we'll have like four things going, you know. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so just again, take a minute, step away. And when we get to, you know, when you get to, you have a lot of fullness in there, you can just tap. This is a Rembrandt, so it's not going to tap for me, but you can just tap some of your softer pastel up at the top <clears throat> along with those lines to create that illusion of how many lines you think there are. You know, you can kind of fill it in with a little tap. Um, I save that for the very, very end because I don't want to commit to the tap just yet <laughs> because it might not be necessary, but I have a love-hate relationship with uh, wintertime trees. Mm -hmm. I really, you know, when you take your time and you get them right, they're really great. But <laughs> getting them <laughs> to that point is really mm. tedious. All right, I'm looking at the water for a minute because I can't, I can't, I can't go with the trees right now. I gotta, I'm gonna go insane. Um, so looking at the water, you know, we have the little bits of frosty, frozeny kind of bits, the little bits of like the deeper, darker. I mean, the water. I don't know how deep the water is there. I mean, you're not allowed to swim in it or whatever, but um. It looks like it's deep enough. So this is like a navy that I have in my hand. It's a little darker than it should be, but I'm gonna put some lightness on top. But just to get those little stripies in there. Um, I'm gonna go back to the um, original underlining right. color. That, is that what you do? I mean, I lost it. What do you mean? What well, you it's, it's oh, you lost your lost line. line. Yeah. So because you have all that light down and you're going to put the dark on top of it, I would carve a line. So carve out some of the with your paintbrush. Carve out with the dry one. Carve out the um, space, the tooth to open the tooth. <laughs> Otherwise, it blends with the light that's underneath, okay. and it'll kind of fill it out. So this is the original hard stick that I used. Okay, the talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she could do that with a brush it off. Yeah, there you are. Brush it off. Take the decision. Oh, yeah, I guess you, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like working with colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're a lot lighter to carry. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Pastelling is a labor of love. <laughs> and it's just a way to stay in shape.
So I, I emphasized that dark line again, and then I kind of ran the same, the hard pastel over some of the light because it, it's not really solid back there. I can decide to make a bold move and just go, you know what, it's going to be, and make a solid line mm -hmm. and just make it a little more graphic um, and simplified. So I kind of like that. Let me see if I can, just taking that initial color from the sky. Mm -hmm. Use again. And then, so down in here, so the water breaks up a lot and you've got the dark and the light and the dark and the light all in through here. That can get really tedious and I don't want to paint that because that's tedious. Yeah. So um, I reemphasize some of that dark and then I can take that same color from the sky and just give it a light run over. Oh, and then they play together perfect. and it creates the illusion that you've worked really hard <laughs> <laughs> to create that. I do like that pink though. I think I'm gonna run a little bit of that pink in there too. I like it. But it's such a light pink. If you don't have the light pink, you can go with you can go with the oranges, you know, because we put orange in the sky. It can be a really pale orange or a really pale yellow. Does the pink like brighten up other colors? It can, yeah, from just being next to it. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes one of the things that I find can be a little tricky is when you have frozen water and snow next to one another. So you're using really similar, if not the same colors to create um, the same illusion of the reflections, you know? So it's one of those things where you just have to think about your markings and how like the directions and the how you're making your mark as to so you can create that separation between water and snow. This is my eggplant and just kind of reinforcing some of the shapes. So these trees, you know, you can see they look a little bit bulbous on the bottom. They kind of were like they had these like root stacks that would come up out of the water, even though it's not tidal water, it's just its own little lake. Um, I guess the water changes enough that it would have those big bulbs sticking up there. So I use a lot of variety, you know, between turquoise and um, a medium blue for snow shadows. Just keep in mind, sometimes turquoise can be um, very gray and lightless. So if you accidentally get that, just go over it with another blue. So if you want snow on your branches, like, like this one right here that goes across, if I want some snow on it, it's just the same concept as rolling and you're just gonna sit it right on top. 
and just kind of roll with it. And I always like to tuck it into the little crook there. And, you know, when you have your thinner tree branches, you can have the branch itself kind of made out of snow, so to speak. You just have a whole branch. It's just in the light blue. Because that also helps with the illusion that there's a lot more branches there. If some of them are just a little pale blue. Um, if you just want it to look like there's that little dusting of snow sticking to some of the bark pieces, it's just a gentle sit it on the edge of the branch or on the trunk and just kind of give it a little tap. That's not going to be seen very well on screen. Um, I'll take a picture of it and when we're all done, you guys will get a final picture so you can really take a look at things a little bit closer. Um, So that color that I thought I really liked before looks really dull now that I have blue next to it. Doesn't look as pretty as it did. I'll have to update that. So I'm going to pause for a second because I'm going to step away and clear my eyes and look for what I need to do next. So I suggest you do the same. We've been working. We only have about a half hour left. So we've been really working hard. So if you haven't taken a break, take one now.